It's been a while, old friend. Um, <laughs> if you follow the channel for long enough, you'll recognize uh, this cab here. Uh, in fact, I, um, I haven't done anything much with it since, um, other than just uh, strip it and take a lot of stuff out. Um, but also, I've, uh, the, the boards finally die. I ended up uh, selling the, both board stacks and some of the parts in it that I won't need. Uh, I also have the power supplies I need to uh, shift and the soundboards because I don't need them anyway. Um, long story short, it's time to start working on this again. Uh, I have already, I moved the, so right here uh, for now, no, that's it's actually in there. I have, this is I, I had the, I have this one out from the other cab in the blue shed and I have a unit in my room with the, um, FFB board and the G, uh, the Model 3 hack uh, board on it that I'm soldering at the moment. I'll show you that in a minute. And the plan is to connect, um, hopefully not make any mistake, uh, it should be good as is, and to connect that to a driver board from, I think this was from an Outrun 2. So I need to wire that in, um, put everything back and see if uh, I can start uh, getting some controls on, on this guy. So I am putting this PC in, um, which has the Model 2 and 3 uh, emulator as well as uh, Outrun. I, um, I, I, I discovered, you, uh, you know, I learned about Techno Parrot recently, so I might change my plan as to what I put in, but I don't think this machine will be able to run it. I could be wrong. I'll have to um, do tests. So I might put model to entry in that. Um, let's go back inside the house because it's still very cold and I try not to work on anything here in winter because it's just it's just not a pleasant. All right, you want to do it? This video is sponsored. <laughs> That's not what well, this video is sponsored by P. Yeah. PCB way. This video is sponsored by PCB way. Yeah. They offer PCB manufacturing along with part assembly. Yeah. But they also offer a number of fantastic services like CNC, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding, turning it into a one-stop shop for all your projects. Yeah, you did very well. So go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Why are you? PCBWay. All right, so we're on the bench here. So this is the essentially the plate where normally the model three or two stack is. We got our connectors here. There would be typically the power supply here. Uh, so I'm going to keep that because it's very handy. So uh, what we have here is the FFB board. So this is essentially what connects to your PC via USB and allows you to use the original controls and uh, the original outputs like all the lamps and uh, control the motor as well. Uh, so this is essentially the board that will pretty much save your cab in that sense. And here we have the uh, M3 uh, hack, which is a handy connector board made by uh, Ag Agonite as well, or Agonite. Um, and uh, what it allows you to do is actually use your original control control um, uh, connectors so you don't need to hack anything like you don't need to cut any wires to con to connect it to this board you just connect all your existing um stuff to this board and then we just use solder and um, just solder wires over to uh, over there so everything is mapped there's a honey sheet sheet on the uh, this is a google um, a series of Google documents that actually document what needs to be connected to what. So I'll put the links in the description anyway. But for the uh, uh, for Scud Race, for example, uh, these are the controls on your control panel and in your cab, all that kind of stuff, and the lamps. And here we have uh, what the pin is on the FFB um, uh, hack and what it is on the uh, M3 hack. You have the same stuff for the M2 stack and for different configuration as well. It's really well documented so uh, just have a look through the Google document and uh, it, it, you know, you'll find all the info you need there. I didn't have so far anyway uh, to contact um, Agony to you know, get some explanation that helps. It's pretty straightforward so far. So we're going to finish this. So I've connected pretty much everything uh, what I only need to do now is connect the um, 
TX and RX uh, pins. Uh, so th these are the pins that will allow you to control the driver board here. And this is, uh, it's not what it is in the original uh, Model 3 Scud Race. Uh, it's, you'll need one of those in this case. Again, I'll put the link to a thorough, very thorough um, documentation on the forum that explains um, in, in details and in schematic graphics and everything uh, um, what you need for what. But so I picked this uh, off, uh, I can't remember where, and it's working. So I am, and the pinout is pretty much the same. I think there's a difference here for live and neutral. I think you need to invert the connector. And yeah, these are the pins here. Uh, again, there's documentation as to which one is the TX and RX. I think they're the four four ones here on this side, uh, on this side. So we'll connect it. I'll make, uh, I think I have, I think I have uh, connectors for this, so I'll crimp connector. Uh, it'll be cleaner and that will go in the front of the cap, so it's not going to stay in this area. Um, so that's the last one we need to connect and fingers crossed, I think we've connected pretty much everything. Um, it will need power as well, uh, so you can connect the, um, um, it's a Molex power connector, which you know, it's handy because we're using a PC in this case. Uh, I'm not out outputting a, a VGA, I'm outputting RGB for now, but you've got a VGA out and an RGB out. Um, and I have good faith I can... I'm going to use a converter for now um, for the CRT. I'd like to keep the CRT even if I lose some of the crispness of the uh, picture quality. I'll, I'll see, I'll see. I'd like to keep the CRT as much as I can. So we'll see. As you can see, it can get messy, so just make sure you zip ties for all your extra connection. Um, it can be a bit tedious just to, you know, make sure the correct length. And even there, you, know, you can see I, I didn't quite uh, do a, as tidy a job as I wanted to, but it's better than not. And here, I'm um, just going to have to, yeah, maybe once everything is all done, uh, just get stuff out of the way and just uh, use zip ties to keep everything tidy. I, li I like stuffed idea i hate having a uh, jumbles of wires in every direction so um anyway so let's continue that do the uh, tx rx uh, connection and then we can start putting stuff hopefully back in the in the cab you know while i'm at it this is the google uh, document drive that he has created for this so uh, you get um equivalent sheets for pretty much any system you can think of, uh, at least in the Sega model one and two, and uh, and some Lindbergh, I think, I think as well. Anyway, so get, um, yeah, Sega Rally that's gonna come in handy. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, from M2 stack, so this is the wiring connection diagram, um, so very handy. And you got a few uh, software, so the updates to the firmware is here. Uh, I think this is the UI. Uh, uh, tool and some high sp hyper spin stuff. I'm not exactly sure what is what, but um, yeah, just make sure you you have a look at what's you know everything there. You will find the document that you need. Um, so let's keep going. This mess <laughs> is my PC build. Well, just uh, roughly laid out. So like I said, I have the uh, FFB board uh, and the. M3 uh, hack, so essentially I connect my uh, Model 3 cab harness into this and this goes into this and this one connects through the PC via USB, so this is for all our controls. Uh, this is my PC here decased, uh, it's working fine, I've tested it. Uh, I'll have to find a way to mount the, uh, the fan here. Uh, power supply that came with it, it's a funny, funny one. Um, so I need a smaller, well, a small power supply as well. Uh, just I'm going to power this as well. I'm not sure if that would be enough to power everything. So just in case, but this is uh, sort of the same rating as this. It's not going to take much power anyway. Um, with my hard drive over there, I might replace that with an SSD uh, down the line. Uh, buttons here to start everything. I'm not going to start anything right now. It's not connected anyway. I need to connect this power supply and I need to... Before I even just start tinkering, I want to find a way to run or to tap the power supply from the cab so I can power this. Uh, I can see I can use 115 
but I'm, I don't see a switch on this guy. So what I'll do is I'll run both as straight coming from straight from the uh, well after the, the filter board and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to tap uh, a connection from there somehow. I just need to uh, to find exactly the best the best way to do this. Or maybe I suppose I don't need to do this in this cab because this is just my test rig. Uh, maybe uh, maybe just yeah I might just do that actually. Just power them off the mains here for now and then when I install them I'll just tap it right off this is our switch over there uh, mains is coming here goes into the switch and back out here so maybe just tap that off somewhere out like that just uh, right off this connector then maybe something like that yeah I might do that all right so I got my stack whatever this is now at this stage running in there um, we got the F board powered and I use this uh, little board so th what this is, is it takes VGA and it outputs uh, RGB they're not perfect they're far from ideal the quality is so so but I have to say now this um, monitor um, has issued has geometry issues here it needs it needs a recap at the very least and a clean and all that kind of stuff and it has it's slightly wobbly so the, the picture isn't great but I think I think it stands and to be honest on those big screens um, for those 3d uh, games it actually helps to get a little bit of blurriness which this uh, essentially introduces but you, you can see the the yeah there you go the wobbliness that's due to my monitor not to the board here um it, it happened uh, with the original game but i think it i think it looks fine as it is and uh, there i say i'm happy to keep the <laughs> I'm happy to keep this. It needs some adjustments, geometry adjustments and that kind of stuff. Uh, here, there you go. Uh, bring this down. I don't think... Yeah, I think that's the extent of uh, how far I can bring it down, but that's that's just due to the monitor. Um, I can stretch it, I think I can... Uh, there's a menu option and I can alter it. Uh, I need to change the, uh, the, the color settings to make them pop a little bit, but I think it I think it's just fine. Let me just get a wider angle. Um, so that's great news. So next, well, uh, we need to configure the FFB board. Um, I'm not sure. See, I, I bought this uh, driver board over there. I'm not sure if it works. It's, it's a driver board that works with, you know, with this. So it should be fine. But there's only really one way to um, to verify that it works. Uh, it's to uh, um, go back to Windows and do some uh, some extra work. So I'm going to do some uh, tinkering for a while and then report. Um, the, the guides are up there. They're in French, but Google Translate is your friend there. And uh, and uh, I'm going to follow that and s see if I can get force feedback working. At the very least, I think I should be able to uh, at least get controls working anyway. Uh, not right now. Nothing is configured. Oh, yeah. That's obviously it with the sound running. Uh, so you, the way you uh, tap the sound is uh, off here. So you connect the rear and front connectors uh, that come out of here. Uh, at these connectors here and then you get uh, just a RC cable. I've got an adapter here for a jack and you connect that straight out um, of the PC. And there you go. So this is several weeks later, we've had a bit of a, uh, not a disaster, but just a hard drive a fail, not unusual, uh, it's an old computer, it was just crawling, it, it slowing down to a crawl, it was, just, uh, it was just impossible to run anything, so I've just put an SSD there now. It actually makes more sense, uh, to be honest, I should have done that anyway, and, uh, and first because just the boot time is reduced by 10. <laughs> and uh, it'll make things easier so um, I might as well cr go through the guide for installing it so uh, if you go to the uh, to the Google Drive that Agonite has uh, provided you'll find this update folder 
and uh, in there there's a readme so it's in french unfortunately but it, it says two things or it says uh, the first time you set this up and here is for updating afterwards but the first time you need to install uh, the pilots for the uh, arduino card um, avr and then uh, we need to install win avr reboot um, and then we need to check what the COM uh, port is um, for our uh, Arduino for the FFB board. Uh, and then we'll run the flash bat, uh, dot bat um, to send the, uh, the program to the Arduino, depending on what type of setup we, uh, we need. So uh, uh, I'll show you that. Um, and this is where you need the COM board when you start the uh, batch file, it'll ask you for the COM board. And then the decom port, and then we'll need to install VJoy, and then the uh, the software for the uh, the act to control uh, the actual uh, uh, force feedback from your PC. So there's quite a bit to do. So we're going to do that first. So uh, WinAVR should be in this uh, folder here, pilots for the Arduino. So we're going to just install that, uh, and that should go quickly. Um, if you've if you've tinkered with Arduinos at some point, you would have seen these drivers come up. Um, you you often have to uh, install these, and that's done. And uh, next, we can close that. Right, next we're gonna go to a this uh, folder um, and install WinAVR. All right, and uh, now we just need to quickly uh, do a quick reboot. So let's just do that, and I'll come back when we're back up. All right, we're back up. I've opened here the uh, device manager, and if we go to parts, come here, and you can see that COM4 is the uh, default port for uh, that CH340. Uh, uh, so we're gonna make a mental note of that, or leave that open. So we're gonna go back to the program uh, folder here, and you have a list of things there. So we're gonna search for something that looks like what uh, our setup is. What our setup is, it's a PC that's connected to a model tree and that has the four button controls here and uh, the uh, four, um, four position uh, gear. Uh, so we're gonna uh, look at s for something similar and I think PC to Sega FFB uh, it's the MIDI uh, MIDI board uh, with four of you, so that looks like what we're looking for. So we're going to click on the flash.exe here, and here it's going to ask us for our COM port, so we're going to enter four, and there you go, it's writing stuff, we can see the uh, flash in here. It seems to have gone okay. Press any key to continue, and there you go, that should be our board program so next <laughs> we are gonna have to install vjoy i'm not sure if i mentioned this but this is the tutorial i put the link to uh, this guy here as well uh, it is in french again but uh, google translate is your fan and it does a pretty decent job of translating um at least the text uh, obviously not the uh, not the pictures but the pictures are sort of self-explanatory. So we're looking for, um, we're looking, we've gone through the hardware setup, software control, so there you go. So it actually goes through everything uh, you need to uh, to install. Uh, so we've done all that. Um, we've done the flashing, and now we need to install uh, VJoy. So we're looking for VJoy setup sign.exe uh, 2.20. Uh, VJoy setup is provided. Uh, essentially, if you go to this link, which is the link uh, where the creator of the uh, the software that uses uh, VJoy um, brings you to this link here, and you'll find his latest release on the GitHub. So uh, I might put a link to that as well. But essentially, you download this, and uh, I done this before because I did it in the previous uh, hard drive, and it downloads it downloads uh, this Backforce feeder setup. Uh, 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 six uh, oh six is currently the latest release, and it it contains that uh, VJI setup. But then once you've done that, you uh, click on setup, uh, which is the Backforce feeder software. So sorry about the confusion. Uh, 
and just install that. Uh, and next here they'll tell you to configure VJoy by uh, the uh, uh, configure VJoy uh, tool. Uh, so we just need to set up uh, a few things. So keep the axes here, uh, just those three axes, uh, X, Y, and Z. And that's all we need. Uh, we're gonna go for 16 buttons, and well, it's enable effects. Uh, all of it and I think that's it yeah we can close this now and so at this point usually you launch the uh, back uh, force uh, feeder GUI um, but you need to reboot uh, I, I, I haven't had much luck getting it to work without a, a reboot so we're gonna do that here so this uh, opens this little program done by uh, NJZ3 um, by the way this is a trial version so you will need to register your copy so the instructions are here if this doesn't work you can actually send a, an email uh, directly to uh, to this email address with the uh, machine ID uh, it's free it's free by the way uh, anyway so we've uh, PC, PC, uh, PWM Center uh, and there you go this uh, has the uh, ready status we're in digital PWM so I think that's us here oh dear I'm going from uh, one problem to the other so uh, essentially, I have VJoy uh, here running, and it's um, it's reading my wheel. There you go. Uh, but the f the force feedback isn't working, and it's because this guy here, this uh, board, which I should actually mention, is not the original um, power board for the motor. This is a it's a it's a board from. Um, a Outrun 2. Uh, I'll put the model there not on the screen but uh, that's what you need. It's not the force feedback needs one of those boards or another a selection of board but it doesn't work with the original model tree uh, board which is uh, over here. So these guys uh, are no good although I, 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 I understand that uh, they might be working on it. I'm not sure exactly where it's at or if uh, if that's uh, um, ongoing or what. But right now they're not compatible, so we need a driver board from or whatever they're called, uh, power board from uh, Outrun to uh, the uh, Lindbergh uh, type of boards. Uh, this is it. But um, it looked a bit crusty when I got it and I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. It worked for a while and now it's sort of died. I'll show you maybe later. Uh, there's some corrosion on it and uh, uh, I'll see if I can fix it, but I might need to order a new one. So that's one thing. So the force feedback right now is not working. And the, the other thing I discovered is that Model 3 uh, Supermodel works well for um, as a, just the demo, as the, uh, the attract mode. As soon as I uh, start playing the game, I credit it, which works, the button works and everything. I've configured the, uh, the um, shifter per, as per the guide. But as soon as I start playing the game, it slows us down. And to be honest, I think this PC is way underpowered to run 3D stuff. It's a, it's a desktop, uh, office desktop type of PC, it's just running a basic Intel um, driver for graphics and while it can display the, you know, the graphics, the, the frame rate just drops. So I do have uh, my old motherboard from my old PC uh, and that should work just fine, fingers crossed. So uh, I'm gonna, I need to order another one of those and I need to replace my motherboard, which is actually not a bad idea because I don't like this double uh, power, um, ATX power uh, thing I've going on here. So I just have one power supply, one motherboard, uh, see if I can reuse the existing hard drive and hopefully that will do the trick. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It's a bit... Uh it's a bit crusty. I did actually run continuity tests before putting it in, but uh, I, th I think this board was a uh, 
hanging on for dear life for a while. Ah well. I'll try to source a new one. Alright, so I tried something on this IC and um, I reflowed all the legs and while doing it I actually saw that this leg here, this pin, was completely or almost completely cut off. Uh, it was so corroded, uh, there was only the, the slightest bit at the top. So what I've done, and this is the five uh, plus 5 in, uh, and the fact that the, those three legs are all plus 5, uh, it's hard to know whether they're connected internally or they need to be uh, powered individually, you know what I mean? So what I've done is I have actually, I'm trying to hold this camera by hand, by the way, I'm sorry about the shaking. Um, so what I've done is I've built up uh, solder, hopefully up to that leg, so it's hard to know exactly if it's actually going to that little thing. So I'll, I'll try that, I'll try to repower this guy and see if that makes a difference. So I tried it uh, in uh, back in, but no luck. Essentially, so it, I tried it in again and uh, still no luck. But when I inspected closer, so I removed the, the solder that was linking uh, this guy to this guy. We can see it's actually, it's not really uh, anywhere to be seen. So I don't think it was making contact anyway. Yeah, there's just nothing there left. Um, but this guy was chewed as well, this pin. So th these three pins are different types of VCC. And I looked at the data sheet for this IC. This one is for the analog. And this one, I think, or is it this one? is straight uh, VCC and anyway they're all needed <laughs> long story short and they're not connected um, together internally so they need to be connected externally which is why this big tab is here providing the plus five to all three but essentially we've got two VCC uh, lines missing and this one is probably corroded deeper inside so there's not much chance of it uh, working in the first place I think it's just uh, Thank you. I think it just uh, worked for a little bit uh, until probably it heated up from uh, the extra resistance that was provided by the uh, corrosion and then sort of uh, disintegrated and stopped working. So uh, this guy could probably be fixed, but this guy would require to try to get a Dremel and drill back to the wires connecting to the die. Uh, I've seen people do that uh, for uh, Arcade Custom sometimes, or chips that were corroded. So I might try that as sort of a last resort. I see a little bit uh, here, but I don't think there's enough metal to make a good connection. So I might, I'm, I'm going to attempt, if I can't find a replacement for this guy, just drill and see if I can get back to the, the wire that goes to the center of the IC. Regardless... I've ordered a new one uh, just because I'll actually need a second one because I have two of these uh, cabs. So I'll, I'll need a second one at some point. So I've ordered a new one anyway. And uh, we might see if we can salvage this one. Oh man, forget it. Uh, look at that. So the uh, the three VCC pins were essentially broken. The, uh, the ground pins, there's two ground pins here, one of them broke. Again, I don't know if they're connected internally. They might be for a ground for a different part of the chip. And then on the other side, there's two more pins that broke, that, that were broken. What am I saying? Three more. So this thing was just corroded uh, beyond repair. And I was just lucky it powered on at all, at any point. Not unsurprising, I mean, the state of it was... Uh, a bit worrisome. Uh, that's just a re that's not rust on top. It's just a reflection of the light above. Uh, but the state of uh, the circuit. So I managed to remove it. However, um, there's a good few. You can see the state of it. I mean, it was just corroded underneath, and the uh, the traces were super weak. Um, they're all. Uh, some of them have moved over here. This side was just as bad as this side, and here you can see there's one. There's two here, lifted trays, and then there's one badly lifted trays here. I did try to be super careful, and I did apply plenty of flux, 
but they were just as soon as the the chip kind of lifted on its own uh but as soon as i, I lifted that the traces were just too weak and they they, uh, they didn't come with the chip they just lifted afterwards they just went bloop. uh which is just a sign of essentially you know probably too much heat to start with but ultimately that these traces were just too weak really to be uh so i don't know what to do um find a replacement i see maybe uh maybe the board from my other my model tree uh shares that i see i'll have to have a look press the wrong button on the phone here but um so yeah so the question is uh what to do i think i might attempt to fix it at some point but for the purpose of this video and this build i'm gonna wait for the other um board to arrive uh and use those instead provided <laughs> they don't have a similar problem but um it, it it is fixable uh i'll just have to take my time and then i'll have to clean here i'm not sure what's going on here and uh, and i have to trust that this is the only problem i mean in all likelihood but yeah you never know m37704m blah 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 all right so i spent quite a bit of time just trying to clean this uh, this leg here just definitely gave out, but I managed to uh, sort of uh, super glued uh, a lot of the pins that were lifted, about 10 of them, back on. And then I looked at this board, uh, which has the, the same same IC. Uh, so this is straight from the Model 3, but it's not compatible with the FFB board. And I thought, maybe I can take this um, out of here and put it there. And, I mean, it would be quite a challenge. This is in such a bad state. And there's no ultimate guarantee that this was... I mean, it was indeed an issue anyway. Uh, there was no chance of it working. But if it's the only issue with this board. But then I looked at the data sheet of what this IC is. It's actually a programmable microcomputer. Anyway, so this means that this is a programmable uh, computer. Um, and the uh, there's a, a ROM in it as well. So the... The, uh, the chance of this from here working on this guy, even though it's the same IC, um, are zero, really, because the program will be different. Uh, in fact, the fact that there's two versions of this with a different program in the IC, um, and that Agonite had to make two versions of the software. So this is not going to work. I cannot take the IC from here and put it there. So that's the end of that little adventure. And uh, I'm glad I ordered a new one because unless I find wine f from that exact same board, I know how to reprogram one of these guys, which, um, yeah, not happening. It's kind of frustrating because I was really looking forward to showing you uh, this working. It, it kind of is. I can actually play the game. It's just a bit slower. So I'm just going to swap the motherboard and maybe call it a day for this video it's going to be a multiple part and like everything we'll do a big a big a big uh, uh, video uh, at the end of the project but right now i'm just eager to release something because some of you have asked me about that project and about how to set up the uh, uh, force feedback board and that kind of stuff so um maybe maybe this part will help uh, it's essentially the same process except when we uh, click on the uh, when we enable the manager we should see the wheel uh, slightly turn which i had running earlier so folks i think this is going to be it for this small video we'll do a, a follow-up we we'll get everything working and we'll have to move this or we'll have to move this setup to the uh, the shed over there where the uh, the the other cab is let me actually show you so there you go. This is uh, this is my clean build uh, that I'm I've uh, I've put together, um, and I've uh, resprayed, clean, tidied everything, uh, so it's just ready to get the uh, the actual system board uh, here and it'll be ready to go. But uh, obviously we need to do some work. But yeah, this is going to be my uh, my cab sitting cab here. Um, and I'll just have the one, uh, but yeah, just uh, I took all the best part from the uh, from both, and just built this one. And the wheel and the shifter are just uh, gorgeous and pristine. So yeah, I was hoping to start doing that today, but that's not the case. Anyway, folks, I think we'll leave it at that for this video. Like I said, and thank you for watching. I hope 
some elements of it were interesting, but you know, this is how the, the, the hobby goes. You know, sometimes it goes well, sometimes there's a, a few hiccups on the way and uh, I, I try to show everything, you know, the, <laughs> the mistakes, the errors, the, uh, the disasters as well as the, the uh, successes. So there you go. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more parts on this. It's not over. And uh, see you next time.